What's up guys, Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. This is the beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy A02s. In this video, I'm gonna be going over some different tips and tricks for this phone that you're gonna wanna know if you're just getting started with it for the first time. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is probably the easiest thing you can possibly do with this phone, and that is how to customize the home screen. Now, you can technically get to some of the settings through the settings menu, but really the faster way to do it is to place one finger on the screen and hold it for just a second like this. And then this menu is gonna come up. You're gonna be able to change your wallpaper, different themes and widgets, and then of course the home screen settings, and that's a whole new set of settings in itself. And you can do a lot with this. You can even rearrange the app grid and change how many apps can go on the screen. So I definitely suggest playing around with this as soon as you get the phone so you can really personalize it and make it your own. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to change the clock style on the phone. Now in case you don't know, by clock style, I mean the clock on your lock screen. You can actually change not only the style, but the color as well. So let me show you how to get there. So we're gonna go to settings, lock screen, and clock style right here. And now you're able to choose from a few different styles for the clock, actually quite a few. Once you've selected the clock you want, you can go to color and choose a different color too. And then when you're done, all you need to do is hit done, and it's gonna show up like that on your lock screen. And speaking of the lock screen, now I'm gonna be showing you how to change the lock screen type. This is equally as easy, and you can do it from the same menu. So right now we are on the main settings menu. Go back down to lock screen, open the menu, and now you have the option to change the lock screen type. It's gonna have you enter your pin. And once you've done that, you're gonna be able to change to whatever type of security you want. Now this phone does have face unlock, and if you don't have your face registered, but you want to use face unlock, there is an extra step you need to do. So we're in the main settings menu once again. Before you go to lock screen, you're going to hit biometrics and security. And right up at the top where it says face recognition, if your face is not registered, you're going to have to register it, and it'll walk you through those steps. Once you're done and your face is registered, Go back to lock screen, go back to lock screen type, enter your pin, and then you're gonna see on the bottom where it says biometrics, you're gonna toggle face on, which for me, of course, it already is, and you're gonna be able to use face unlock after that. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to get the dark theme. The dark theme is basically where all the colors of everything on your menus turn to dark colors from light colors. It's pretty cool. You can also schedule it to do it at certain times of day. Let's take a look at how to get there. So we're in the main settings menu right now. We're gonna go to display, and it's really simple. Light and dark, hit dark, and it's gonna activate the dark theme. You can also go to dark mode settings, and here you can schedule it to turn on at certain times of day. And you can also turn on the color filter that filters out some of the blue light if that stuff is hard on your eyes. The next thing I'm gonna go over is the system navigation. Now here at the bottom, you'll see the three buttons that usually show up on Android navigation systems. We got the recent apps button, the home button, and the back button. But I'm gonna show you a completely different type of navigation that gets rid of these buttons and turns it into one bar where you can easily navigate through the phone using just gestures. So we're gonna go to settings, display, and navigation bar. Now you actually have the option to switch the places between the recent apps button and the back button. But for this, we're gonna hit swipe gestures. And now it's just this little bar down here, no buttons. To go home instead of pressing a button, you're gonna swipe up. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger up from the bottom. And to go back, swipe horizontally from one side of the screen to another. It doesn't matter which direction, it's gonna do the same thing. So there or that way, it doesn't really matter at all. Gesture navigation is a really cool feature, but I definitely recommend trying it out for yourself first and seeing if you like it. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to activate one-handed mode. Have you ever been in a situation where you have to use your phone with only one hand? 
it can get pretty tough, especially if you're trying to type or reach around the screen, you can easily drop it like that. So Samsung created one hand mode to help with this problem. So to get there, we're gonna hit settings, go down to advanced features, and go to one-handed mode. So right now, one-handed mode is set to activate with a gesture. So by swiping down like that, so basically what happens is the display shrinks down like this, so you can more easily use it with one hand. See, now you don't actually have to reach all the way around the phone itself. You can just go to here and it's a lot easier. And you can always press this little button to change the side of the screen. And when you wanna go back to full screen, just hit the black area and it's gonna go back. Now that was gesture. It's a little bit tricky sometimes to activate it. So if you have trouble with gesture and you don't use gesture navigation, you can use a button instead. And that's just double tapping the home button and it's gonna do the same thing. Now keep in mind that you can't use the button if you have gesture navigation, you have to use the gesture then. So it's not really that big a deal, just remember that in case you switch your system navigation and are wondering why it's not working. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is a really quick shortcut to get to your camera. All you need to do is double tap the power button and it's gonna open that up. But there's also something else you can do with that function. So we're gonna go to settings, advanced features, motions and gestures, side key right up at the top, and now, see how it's defaulted to quick launch camera? We can have it open an app instead. And now, for whatever reason, Snapchat's selected. We're gonna have it open that just by double tapping the power key. And there we go. So that's a really cool way to open an app that you want really quick access to, or you can just have it open the camera instead. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is a little bit about how to control the sounds. Now sounds on a phone, in my opinion, are some of the most important settings because you don't want it to make annoying noises constantly, or at least I don't. So we're gonna go to settings and go to sounds and vibration. By default, all the sound is turned on and vibrate while ringing and all that is turned off. You can go here to change the ringtones and you can actually have two ringtones because this is a dual SIM phone. And you can also change the notification sound too. Now if you're like me and don't like it making any type of sound whatsoever, you can hit vibrate. So you're gonna get notifications by feeling the vibration, but it's not gonna make any annoying noises. Or you can mute it if you really want to. You can also change the vibration pattern and there are definitely a few of them to mess around with. The last thing I'm gonna show you actually goes hand in hand with the sounds and that is notifications. So we are in the main settings menu. Once again, we're gonna go to notifications right here. And by default, it's set to allow all the notifications from all the apps you have. I definitely recommend going through everything you have and really evaluating whether or not you actually want notifications from those things because otherwise, you could be getting some sort of notification nonstop and it gets really annoying. So definitely take the time in the beginning when you first get the phone to really look through this. Otherwise, it'll start to feel like you're getting spammed when it's really just notifications from all the apps you have that are usually just meaningless. So the other thing in the notification section that I wanna take a look at is the status bar. So there are two things you can control on the status bar. The first one is what notifications are shown up here. You can have it show the number and that's just gonna be a simple, clean little number right here. Or you can have it show three most recent, which is pretty default, I believe. And then you can also have it show all of them, which I don't recommend this because it's so messy looking, but if you want to, you definitely can. The other thing you can do from this menu is control the battery percentage. Right now it's not there by default, but you can toggle this on and it's gonna show up. But that was my beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy A02s. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you found these tips and tricks useful as well. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.